hey guys welcome to my channel so today we are going to discuss ipv4 header okay so the minimum length for ipv4 header is 20 bytes and maximum could be 60 bytes so generally we don't see ip options enabled you know because uh, the uh, security devices will uh, drop the ip packet with ip options enabled so generally you will not see this field uh, you know in the uh, packets ip datagrams okay so the very first field in the ip header is of version it is four bits right so again your ip header is 32 bits long okay so the very first field is version field it is of four bytes four bits and it tells you about whether this ip uh, header is of version 4 or it is version 6 right then we have the very next field which is header length again it is of four bits this header length will tell you the length of the header what is the length of the header okay then we have eight bits of type of service this field is used to check congestion in your network and to reduce the window size accordingly so we have ect code points in this field and if it is set it means there is a condition and we need to take proper uh, you know action accordingly then we have total length it is of 16 bits it will tell you the total length i mean it will tell you the header length plus data payload so total length is equivalent to header length plus data payload okay so the next field we have is identification so identification is used to identify the packet so let's say uh, there are four packets ip packets one two three four and these are the fragmented packets of this uh, packet so the identification number is 0x1 so the identification number for all of these packets will remain 0x1 okay so when these packet will be received by the receiver at the time of reassembly receiver will get to know that these belong to same packet and this has been fragmented by any uh, intermediate device and i need to reassemble into single packet okay and it is also being used to uh, identify the packets uniquely okay so it is also 16 bits long field then we have flags so initial first bit is reserved then we have do not fragment and then we have more fragment do not fragment means you are not supposed to fragment this ip datagram and more fragment means uh, this packet is this packet has been fragmented by the device and more fragments are coming okay so these three flags they reserve three bits okay then we have fragment offset so this offset it has three 13 bits okay and we use fragment offset to you know to uh, tell receiver from where your data gram is starting okay so it will tell you the size of the data gram okay uh, let's say let's take example so let's say at receiver end you have a buffer and this is your buffer boundary and it will be 2960 then it will be 4440 and then it will be 5000 so in total length your size is 5000 bytes and the MTU for network is 1500 bytes so at the time of fragmentation so I'll divide my my this big payload into fragmented packets of 1500 bytes 
okay so this fragment offset field will contain the size for each fragmented packet and accordingly your receiver will place those packet in this buffer so that at the time of reassembly it can reassemble it into proper you know proper received packet so don't worry about this we will cover fragmentation in detail in next video okay so as of now i'll keep it simple so just take it like this uh, it will contain the uh, size of the fragment packet okay then we have time to live so let's say uh, let me create some space first okay so in time to live will tell you to avoid network loops right so this is your windows machine it is connected with router 1 then we have router 2 then we have router 3 and then this is our destination machine so if TTL value is 64 here at this point of time it will be 63 at this point of time it will be 62 and at this point of time it will be 61 so it will be decremented by 1 at each hop okay this is your hop so once the packet is received by the receiver the TTL should be greater than 0 if it is equal to 0 the receiving uh, machine will simply discard that packet okay so this mechanism is there to avoid the loop inside a network okay the very next field is of protocol so this TTL is 8 bits long then we have another 8 bit long field which is protocol so this protocol will tell you the upper layer protocol so whether it is a TCP UDP ICMP okay so it will tell you the protocol number so here you can see for ICMP protocol number is 1 IGMP 2 TCP 6 IGRP 9 UDP 17 GRE 47 ESP 50 AH 51 skip 57 eigrp 88 ospf 89 l2 tp 115 okay so uh, you can visit to aina for all the protocol numbers or we will cover this as well in coming lectures okay so then we have header checksum field it is of 16 bits now this field will check whether the TCP header is ending on 32 bit boundary or not okay so this checksum is only for IPv4 header it will not include your data payload unlike TCP header okay so inside TCP header your checksum will also you know check for the uh, data payload as well but in IPv4 header uh, your header checksum will only check for header itself you know whether the header is uh, ending at 32 bit boundary or not okay then we have source address source IP address so IP address is of 32 bits long okay and then we have destination IP address so source IP address then we have destination IP address both IP addresses are 32 bits long okay and then we have IP option field so this option field is not commonly used so you won't be able to uh, see so in general you you will be able to see that IPv4 header length is equivalent to 20 bytes okay so now we will uh, check Varsha captures to validate this information okay uh, okay let me show you Varsha captures okay so this is my send packet so this is the frame then this is the Ethernet header then we have this layer 3 information so we in previous lectures we have covered layer 4 information now we need to cover layer 3 information so layer 3 your IPv4 is connectionless right it is connectionless
packets can be delivered out of order right so these are the basic uh, features of i mean basic fundamentals of ipv4 okay so you can verify now the very first field in ipv4 header is version it is of four bits uh, so version is four so you can see bits 0 1 1 0 so if you convert this binary uh, number into hexadecimal it will turn out to four okay then we have header length so this header length will tell you about the header length of the ipv4 header so you can see it is 20 bytes right then we have differentiated services field dsf so this dscp field is used for congestion control so you can see you know so differentiated services code point default zero explicit congestion notification not ecn capable transport so it is set to zero so when it is enabled it means there is congestion in the network and we need to you know reduce the window size so this uh, dscp work in uh, i mean it works according to your congestion and uh, it can vary you know it depends upon the network uh, bandwidth and uh, network congestion at that time and uh, this is also related to tcp header as well okay so in tcp header we have introduced three more flags nuns uh, and cwr and ecn echo so it is related to those flags as well so whenever this flag is set you will see that you know cwr and ecn is also set okay so this is totally for congestion to improve the quality of service then the next field is total length so in total length you would be able to see that it is showing 52 bytes right so the header length is 20 bytes and total length is 30, 52 bytes it means the payload of this ipv4 header is of 32 bytes okay let's uh, understand this like this so mtu so this is your ipv4 header this is your tcp header and this is your payload so this is known as mtu right and uh, total length means the total length of the entire packet it is 52 bytes in our case okay and your ip header is of 20 bytes so it means your tcp segment is of 32 bytes we will validate this, this information okay so then we have ident identification so this is the unique code and for reference you can refer it to 11276 so wireshark will convert this hexadecimal number okay then we have flags in flags field the first field is reserved and it is not set then we have do not fragment so i'm explicitly you know telling my uh, next stop that do not fragment this packet okay and then more fragment is set to zero right then we have fragment offset field so it is 13 bits long field you can see it is set to zero right so we will cover fragmentation in next video in detail right and then we have time to live again it is uh, uh, windows machine so the value is 128 and for linux it's 64 so it depends it depends upon you know upon the operating system you are using and next to time to live field then we have protocol field so protocol will tell you the upper layer protocol so it is tcp 6 so 6 is your protocol number for tcp so if you're gonna minimize it so you will see the next layer protocol is tcp transmission control protocol so that's why in protocol field we are able to get this information then we have a header checksum whether the header is you know ending at 32 bit boundary or not if not then we will add the padding okay and then the source ip so this is my source ip address this is my destination ip address and you can see that options field is missing so ip options are not commonly used okay so 
that's it uh, we have we have covered ipv4 header in detail today and in the next lecture we will cover fragmentation if you have any doubt you can post your comments and if i'll get time i'll definitely answer your queries okay and yeah for in detail i um, mean if you would like to deep dive into ipv4 header you can refer to rfc 791 okay thanks for your time bye bye